Welcome everybody and welcome to Prosperity in Christ Church. I'm Pastor Wayne Smith and uh, uh, just every, I'm glad to have everybody here today and good to talk with you and what a beautiful Sunday we have. Uh, right now, let us open in prayer. Father God in heaven, we come to you right now. We thank you so much for all you do. Father God, we ask you to please just uh, be with me and speak through me. Father God, let your word be known, Father God, with those with the ears, let them hear, Father God. We have so much to be grateful for, and we thank you for so many things. In your beautiful Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How you doing? Well, today we're going to talk about the Christmas story, the birth of Christ. That's why I've got this paraphrased from the Bible. Um, there's a lot to be grateful for. You know, uh, we had a real scare with Brother George, and uh, they had a lesion on his back they thought was a tumor, kidney stones, uh, uh, just all all kinds of pro intestinal problems. I mean, these were things which just showed up. They, well, they wanted to let him in, you know, the night before last. Well, we all prayed fervently and we prayed hard, and you know, and a miracle happened. And they spent all last night and all most of the day today trying to figure out where everything went that was wrong with him. You know, they had they had X-rays, they had proof of these things. You know, and they they just could not. Uh, they they're gone. Amen. Hallelujah. That's God. And that's the miracle of Jesus Christ. That's the miracle of the God we serve. And I believe in all my heart, you know, I, there was a certain point where I was, uh, I woke up at 2.45 in the morning. I realized he wasn't home and I was really worried. I noticed he had sent a text at 11 saying that they admitted him, finally admitted him. And uh, I couldn't go back to sleep. You know, I went on to work today and came back. And uh, But, you know, when I about, oh, I don't know, probably about, 10 o'clock this morning, a peace came over me and said, everything's going to be fine. I've already taken care of this. This is just what I felt like the Lord was telling me. And, and lo and behold, you know, uh, when I woke up, he was fine. So, hey, man, hallelujah. So I thank God for that. And that's a, you know, we, we think that we have, a lot of people get so depressed this time of year. But the reality is, is that the time of the year is not so much about you or I or as it is us and our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, and I know that, uh, you know, that, that, that Christ, you know, we, we celebrate a lot of things just in the path of, you know, the, the gifts that he received at his birth and things like that as we honor his birth. And, uh, uh, and I know we substitute this. I don't think anybody actually knows the exact day, you know, it's a day to celebrate his birth, uh, correct or not. It's a day we chose and we love him, you know, and we love to celebrate it. And, Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I actually start preparing for Christmas as soon as Christmas is over for the next year. You know, I just always have loved Christmas, and I love to, I love to give. I don't make much difference what I receive. What I receive is, is, is beautiful by what, what, I, what I see, the people that I love and care about. That's what I want to receive. Um, I love all of you all. I want you to know I wish all of you a, a Merry Christmas. And believe me, uh, if you're here you got a lot to be thankful for, okay? And we've been through a lot this last year with this country, with coronavirus and everything else. And hopefully we're fixed to take a turn on that. And, and I believe that uh, 2021 is going to be a breakthrough year for us. I just really believe this. I think great things are coming. I know that uh, people I love dearly, you know, my dear, our dear sister, uh, Pastor Dot, you know, she's coming out. She's doing better. I'm so proud of her. I'm so happy for her. God, I'm so happy. You know, uh, just so many, so many good things are, are happening out there. And, and, and we still have all each other with us pretty much. And, 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 and but love you all so much. <clears throat> so now let's just, I'm going to paraphrase. This isn't going to be a long sermon because this is the, the last Sunday before we're going to get to celebrate Christmas. And uh, I know we're still not meeting together, but I think soon that's going to change. And we'll be getting back to having services as normal. And I'll be, I can't wait for that. I, I truly miss the fellowship and, and, and the joy that we have. It's just so wonderful. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the birth of Christ. Let's talk about the reason for the season. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. The Christmas story gives a biblical account of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay. The Christmas story is paraphrased from the New Testament books of Matthew and Luke in the Bible. Amen. And you see all throughout the Bible, you know, in Isaiah and various places in Mika where they talk about Christ, you know. But we, uh, but today we're going to pretty much uh, just kind of scan over his birth and his mother and his, his, uh, his, uh, and Joseph and, and uh, everybody. So let us do this now. Um, 
the references are going to be Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 25, Matthew 2, 1 through 12, uh, Luke 1, 26 through 38, and Luke 2, 1 through 20. Now, we, Mary, a virgin, was given in Galilee, Nazareth, and was engaged to be married to Joseph, a Jewish carpenter. An angel visited her and explained to her that she would conceive a son by the power of the Holy Spirit, and she would carry and give birth to this child, and she would name him Jesus. Amen? At first, Mary was afraid and troubled by the angel's word. Being a virgin, you know, in them days was a big deal. Mary questioned the angel, how will this be? The angel explained that the child would be God's own son, therefore nothing is impossible with God. Humbled and in awe, Mary believed the angel of the Lord and rejoiced in God her Savior. You know, can you imagine in those times? I mean, they were they were stolen ladies for, you know, getting uh, having relationships, you know, uh, before they were married. It was especially a lady, young lady that was in garage and, you know, engaged. You know, this was, a, this was a big scary thing for her, you know, but also a great big honor for her also. Um, you know, surely Mary reflected with wonder on the words found in Isaiah 7, 14, foretelling this event. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Amen. Emmanuel means God with us. Hallelujah. Can you imagine when she realized that she was she was the, she was the the virgin that they were talking about? I wonder if that even come could come into her mind there if she was thinking about that or not. I just wonder what her state was. I know just like any young mother that's gonna that you know finds out they're they're pregnant or they're all I guess it's a scary thing for anybody, let alone this poor lady situation. The birth of Jesus. Now, while Mary was still engaged to Joseph, she miraculously became pregnant through the Holy Spirit, as foretold to her by the angel. When Mary told Joseph she was pregnant, he had every right to feel disgraced. Oh, yes. And taken advantage of, and deceived, and cheated, and just every emotion that, that you would go through when your bride-to-be tells you, oh, I'm pregnant. You know, you've never been with her. Kind of make you a little wondering, wouldn't it? He knew the child was not his own, and Mary's apparent unfaithfulness carried a grave social stigma. This was a this was a big consequence on Joseph too, you know, because uh, they were going to look at him like he would have been a fool, you know, basically. Joseph not only had the right to divorce Mary under Jewish law; she could be put to death by stoning. Wow, big words, big words. Although Joseph's initial reaction was to break the engagement, the appropriate thing for a righteous man to do, he treated Mary with extreme kindness. He did not want to cause her further shame, so he decided to act quietly. But God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream to verify Mary's story and reassure him that his marriage to her was God's will. Amen. The angel explained that the child within Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit, that this name would be Jesus, and that he was the Messiah, God with us. Amen. When Joseph woke from his dream, he willingly obeyed God and took Mary home to be his wife, in spite of public humiliation he would face. Perhaps this noble quality is one of the reasons God chose him to be the Messiah's earthly father. Amen. Joseph, too, must have wondered in awe as he remembered the words found in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. At that time, Caesar Augustus decreed that a census be taken and every person in the entire Roman world had to, to go to his own town to register. Now, Joseph, being of the line of David, was required to go to Bethlehem to register with Mary. While in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to Jesus, probably due to the census, the inn was too crowded, and Mary gave birth in a crude stable. She wrapped the baby in clothes and placed him in a manger. Now, a manger would be a, 
I believe it'd be a little feeding trough or something like that. We go on here and it says the shepherds worship the Savior. Amen. Just like we're supposed to worship the Shaver, the shepherds want to worship the Savior too. Out in the fields, an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds who were tending their flocks and their sheep by night. The angel announced that the Savior had been born in the town of David. Amen. Suddenly, a great host of heavenly beings appeared with the angels and began singing praises to God. As the angelic beings departed, the shepherds decided to travel to Bethlehem to see the Christ child. Amen. There they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby in the stable. And after their visit, they began to spread the word about the amazing child and everything the angel had said about him. They went on their way to praising and glorifying God, but Mary kept quiet, treasuring the words and pondering them in her heart. It must have been beyond her ability to grasp that, the, that sleeping in her arms, the tender child she had just born, was the Savior of the world. Can you imagine just Jesus is right there, you just had baby Jesus, you know he's the Savior of the world. You know he's God with us. You know he's Jesus. He's the Messiah. And, and here he is. He's just right there. How do you, how could you possibly, what would you, what could she have been thinking? Just sheer joy, fear. Am I going to be a good mother? How could I possibly be a good mother to God? I mean, just can you imagine how she's, she's thinking about these things? Now we're going to talk about where we have turned, came to giving gifts. The Magi brings gifts. <clears throat> After Jesus' birth, Herod the king of Judea, at this time wise man, Magi, from the east, saw a star that came in search, knowing the star signified the birth of the king of, Jesus, of the Jews. The wise men came to the Jewish rulers of Jerusalem and asked where the Christ was to be born. The rulers explained in Bethlehem in Judea, referring to Micah 5.2. Herod secretly met with the Magi and asked them to report back after they found the child. Herod told the Magi that he too wanted to go and worship the baby, but secretly Herod was planning to kill the child because Herod was afraid of, that this would be the new king and he would lose his position as king. He was a very evil and wicked man. The wise men continued to follow the star in search of the newborn king and found Jesus with his mother in Bethlehem. They bowed and worshipped him, offering treasures of gold and incense and marrow. When they left, they did not return to Herod. They had been warned in a dream of his plot to destroy the child. Now all this that we just talked about, that happened 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, and we're talking about it right now, was an event that, that, that took about maybe a year, two years total. I don't know exactly how long all this took to be, but it took a little bit of time. But all this time, all this time, and we're still talking about it. And why? Because we're talking about the Son of God. We're talking about God with us. And that's what we, we need to celebrate. When we think of Christmas, when we think about the spirit of giving and, and what we don't have to give or what we do have to give, what we need to think about is what Jesus already gave. If we can give the gift of love, if we can be there for each other, if we can tell another soul about Jesus, that's the gift of Christmas, that's the gift of believing, and that's the gift of loving. And I want all of you to know that you are loved by Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, you need to get right with Jesus. You need to understand why God would send his only begotten son for us so that we could be saved. Because he loves us. And he loves you. And he loves each and every one of you, like you are his one and only child. And God sent his son to deliver us to make right what was wrong in the Garden of Eden. And you know, this, this, is, this is a miracle in itself that we have this redemption, but we don't receive it if we don't ask for it. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, you need to talk to Jesus. You need to tell Jesus, to, Jesus, please come into my heart. Please forgive me my sins. I want to serve you, and I want to serve you from now on. And you need to say that to Jesus and you need to get on your knees and you need to talk to him and repent and just admit that you made mistakes and you're ready to do the right thing. You know, God loves you so much and it's just, this is the best time of the year 
to come to know the Lord. There is any day's a good time, but this is a really good time. This is a special time. And if you've strayed a little bit, get back right with God. Get with him, get close. You know, I've seen a miracle happen where our son George, you know, who we love so much, you know, I, we, we're just so proud of him and that he, he came out of the hospital and he's okay. You know, and we, we just thank God for this. You know, I mean, what else could you, could you, could you be given? I know all y'all love Brother George. I know that. And uh, we're so glad that he's okay. You know, and I'm glad you're okay. And I'm just, again, I just can't wait to see y'all and love y'all so much. But until then, from, from my Sister Smith and I and Jacob and Brother George and Daisy, God bless you and Merry Christmas. We love you so much. And thank you for being with me today, this beautiful Sunday before Christmas in 2020. Hey, man, hallelujah. Praise God. Let us close in prayer. Father God, we come to you right now. We thank you so much for everything you do for us. We ask you, Father God, just to continue to bless us and hold us and keep us. And may this year be mightier than ever, Father God. And we thank you for the gift of your son, the true gift, the one, the most important gift that was ever given to mankind was your son to us. And we know this, Father God, and we thank you for this. And we thank you for this in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And God bless all of you.